Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is a lecture about functional appliances that I prepared for the undergraduate students. Uh, the main learning outcomes of the lecture are stated here. Uh, I would like everybody to know how to, what functional appliance is, and understand how it works, and know the indication for it, and understand and know the best time to start treatment. Is it early mixed dentition or late mixed dentition or early permanent dentition? And then know and describe the different steps of clinical management. Of course, functional appliance is used to treat mainly class two myoclusion, where we try to enhance mandibular growth and correct the class two in growing children. And this was the original definition for it. And class two, if we define class two, class two can be a dental a problem and can be a skeletal problem. Of course, the dental problem can be fixed by many uh, simpler methods like, uh, for example, class two elastics. And sometimes we do extraction. And the skeletal one is the one that uh, we are talking about today, where we need to use special appliances to correct it in children, in growing children. Example for those appliances, we have what we call the functional appliances and the headgear appliance. And the severe, severe ones in adults, sometimes we need to help it by surgery, what we call ortho orthognatic surgery. So th these are examples of the uh, different strategies that we use to treat class two. For example, here, let me turn on the pointer. This is class two elastics that we use from the upper anterior teeth to lower posterior teeth. And mainly we use it for the simple or moderate class two or dental class two. And this is a surgical treatment where we can try to advance the mandible by doing uh, certain cuts in the mandible to advance it. And sometimes we do it as part of two jaw surgery. And this is the headgear appliance, which works by harnessing maxillary growth, allow the mandible to catch up or grow more. And this is the, our interest today, the functional appliance. This is an example of functional appliances called twin block. And where it advanced the mandible, hold it forward, hoping that we correct the class two. So this is our interest is the functional appliance. What's the definition of the functional appliance? According to Profit and others, as stated in the, in the book of Profit, it changes the posture of the mandible, holding it open or open and forward. In other words, we try to jump the bite, the uh, the bad bite into the correct bite. What we do, we stretch the muscles and soft tissues, causing pressures that are transmitted to the dental and skeletal structures to correct the class two. Another definition is to utilize, eliminate, or guide the forces of muscle function, tooth eruption, and growth to correct a malocclusion. So basically what we do is we hold the mandible forward. We jump the bite from the bad bite to the good bite, hoping that muscular and dental as well as skeletal changes take place in order to correct the class two. History goes back to uh, the Monblock appliance, which was developed by Pierre Robin uh, in, the, in, like in the 1920, I think, and was the idea of Pierre Robin is to push the mandible forward in babies born with severely retrognatic mandible and compromised airways. This another uh, pioneer in this field, Kingsley, who introduced the inclined plane, anterior inclined plane, to hold the mandible or bring the mandible forward, hold it in the anterior position, at the same time allow the mandible to grow and allow some dental and skeletal changes to correct the class two malocclusion. This was the first functional appliance that was really uh, known in, uh, in dentistry, which was called activator and was introduced by Andres in 1920s. And basically it's using the principle of forward posturing of the mandible to treat malocclusion with 
uh, this one piece applies as you can see a bulky applies if you look at it from the first look you can tell that it is bulky applies and it's one piece applies in general the activator is bulky applies but it has or it applies the same principle to try to jump the bite forward holding it forward and open and by doing so we hope that the mandible grows unfortunately as i said the disadvantage is bulky that's why using it all the time is difficult and mainly used during night which is in which the function is obviously minimal another disadvantage it, it that it, it lacks proprioceptive contact or it does not allow proprioceptive contact between the tongue and the palate which according to Anderson has minor role that's why he didn't pay attention to remove the, the acrylic palate the acrylic in the palatal area then after that Balters in 1961 he introduced a similar appliance which was less bulkier at the same time he opened the palate removed the acrylic and put coffin spring as you can see so this made it more uh, appropriate to be used allow proprioception between the palate and the tank this called bionator appliance and it is less bulky appliance you can wear it day and night and it was more acceptable by the patients at the same time this labial bow has a vaccinator bow on the side because balter believed that this helped and helped to stretch the cheek to allow passive expansion and allow normal development of the jaws it's another example for the bionator appliance. You can modify it in different ways. You can have here just flutes to allow the eruption of posterior teeth. You can place a posterior bite plane and you can place posterior bite block if you don't want to have any eruption posteriorly. You can add incisal caps, as you can see, to prevent uh, the flaring of lower incisors. And then Clark in 1982, he he developed or introduced a two-piece appliance instead of the Anderson appliance and the Balters appliance, the Bayonator and activators. He introduced two appliances, two-piece appliances. Appliance called Twin Block comes with like it's an Howley upper and a lower Howley retainers with block, upper and lower blocks, and occlusal inclined plane that helps to advance the mandible so um, every time patient wants to close he has to bring his mandible forward and passing this inclined plane and the degree of the inclined plane is a controversial but it's about 45 degrees to allow the mandible to come forward and uh, unfortunately this is advantage by the way that it is two piece appliance and unfortunately that it's made totally tooth borne and most of the pressures will come on the lower anterior teeth and that's why we have such component like active a labial bow with acrylic to prevent the flaring of lower incisors which we expect to happen in those uh, in, in this appliance and also in the other appliances that i mentioned before the activator and the bayonator but here uh, we expect it to happen more because it's totally tooth borne and so the advantage of it, it allows you can wear it 24 hours, can be fixed, can be removable, and the disadvantage is the forward displacement of the lower incisors. Again, if you add jack screw to it like this, you can make it active a function appliance. You can call it active function. A fourth interesting appliance, which is the Hertz appliance, it's a fixed function appliance that is attached to the upper and lower uh, teeth and it's totally tooth borne and it consists of pen and tube As you can see here pen and tube appliance that is also fabricated in a way that every patient every time patients close the mouth he should advance the mandible forward in, in order to be able to close uh, teeth together and the disadvantage of this appliance, the advantage, of course, that it is fixed, can be worn 24 hours. The disadvantage that it is more susceptible to breakage 
and it limits lateral movement of the mandible sometimes and it is totally tooth borne that's why it shouldn't be worn for a long time like the removal one to avoid flaring of lower incisors then after that there were several similar appliances that were introduced like jasper jumper forces appliance and other appliances that can be fabricated they come ready made and you can just use them with the fixed appliance the hertz appliance originally was not used with fixed appliance you have to fabricate it on molar crowns or molar bands or, or in acrylic and then after you finish that you can add the fixed appliance but and w which is very good that to allow or to enhance maxillary or orthopedic effects the other appliances that can be used with fixed appliance like the forces and similar other appliances the class 2 correctors they were found to have more of dental effect than skeletal effect finally we have a unique different appliance that is called functional regulator or frankel 2 appliance was introduced by frankel and it's frankel 2 because we have frankel 3 that is used to correct the class 3 uh, malocclusion or to help correcting the class 3 malocclusion and this the advantage of this appliance is that totally it is totally tissue borne appliance and you can see most of it is located in the vestibule you see that this shield buccal shield and the vestibule and lip pads it has also labial bow for retention and to bring the mandible forward it has lingual uh, pads uh, just to um, remind you i forgot to mention that all these appliances should have a mechanism to jump the bite to bring the mandible forward every time the patient close his or her mouth like the activator and bayonator they have what we call lingual flanges i'm going to show you this one so every time patients wants to close the lingual flange will will touch the lingual of the lower uh, the soft tissue the soft tissue mucosa of the lower and uh, to allow the mandible to come forward in the twin block we have the inclined plane here we have lingual pads, small lingual pads that are located from the lingual. And also the twin block, we have the inclined pain, as I said, and the forces, or sorry, the herbs appliance has what we call the pin and tube. Pin attached to one arch to the lower and the tube in the upper. So every time patients wants to close, they ha he has to advance the mandible forward. Why this appliance had these features? Because Frankel believed that the oral musculature play a major role in uh, developing the arches. So if we stretch the lips with these labial pads and the buccal shield to help stretch the preosteum and stretch the cheek muscles at the attachment and their, at their attachment, this will help to expand and allow passive develop, expansion and development of the upper and lower jaws. In addition to bringing the mandible forward and jumping the bite with the lingual flanges. So these are the, the lingual flanges. I don't have a picture. This is in class three, but usually the lingual flanges should be placed in the lower, not the upper, but just showing you how it looks like. So basically, most of the, uh, th this is an example of appliance that help to do passive expansion. So if we look at these appliances, we can categorize them into three categories, as stated in Prophet's book, passive tooth borne appliances that are without any active components. You can make them active component if you add any uh, active component like springs or screws to allow, move, to, to allow tooth movement in certain direction. And finally, we have the tissue borne appliance example. We have only one tissue borne appliance that is functional regulator or Frankel appliance. So here, just show you, summarize to you the different components that if we are really expert in using functional appliance, we can modify them and design our own appliance if we know the function of each of these appliances. So all these, the three here, they are the by jumping mechanism lingual flanges in activator bayonetal lingual pad or you can do sliding pin and tube or the inclined pane as in the uh, closing inclined pane as it as in the twin block appliance 
and these are other, other appliances that we can use to do other effects. This is the lingual flange I mentioned before that we found in, we see in the uh, Frankel or Frankel regulator, and this is a buckle shield. And here we have the inclined plane, occlusal inclined plane that we see in profit book. And this is, see the buccal shield, very obvious. Lip pass to help to stretch the lip, allow the alveolus to remodel, remodel forward. This is another example or picture for the buccal shield. By the way, all these pictures are taken, uh, are, are uh, taken from uh, profit book. And here also we have, we can modify, as I said, the posterior teeth to have either inclined plane, and sorry, posterior occlusal plane to help extrude only lower teeth, or we can have total posterior back block to prevent the eruption of upper and lower teeth. And also we can have incisor cap here for the anterior teeth to prevent their eruption, allow into a uh, uh, relative intrusion at the same time to prevent their flaring forward. So, what is the effect of functional appliance? According to the literatures, many studies indicated that in growing individuals, mandibular growth can be enhanced over the short period of time. However, long-term effect on mandibular length remains questionable. This is when we compare uh, those uh, groups of functional plants to control, untreated controls. But in general, we can tell that functional appliances do correct the class two, but not only by growing mandible, by combination of dental and skeletal changes. How? Stimulate mandibular growth, allow TMG remodeling, or by, by remodeling the fossa and condylar growth, there's literature showing or there's evidence about that, inhibiting maxillary growth, like the headgear effect, distal movement of the upper dentition, and mesial movement of When to use functional pliers? We, can we should use it in growing children because we aim to stimulate or use the growth to correct class two. We expect to use it uh, earlier in girls than boys because girls, they reach the growth spurt earlier than boys. We expect to use it, well, we would love to use it just before pubertal growth spurt. And there are different methods, as you know, that we can use to detect or predict when the maximum growth spurt happens in the patients by, for example, by looking the height changes, morphological changes of the patient. If we see that the patient started to increase in height quickly and fast in that year, so expect that the patient is at growth spur. We can use other methods, skeletal uh, methods, like the cervical vertebra, vertebral maturation method, and before they used to use the hand rest X-ray method. Why cervical vertebral maturation method is better because, and it's standard of care nowadays, because you can see it on the cephalometric X-ray that we take mainly on all patients. And this is our, or these are the different stages that we see according to uh, cervical vertebral maturation methods. We have six stages, and we usually, we usually expect to see, uh, uh, we expect uh, that maximum growth uh, occurs at the peak at CSV, CVS3 and CVS4. And the new method by Pacetti et al, it's CS3 and CS4, where you can see that the inferior border of C2 is concave and C3, inferior border is concave, but C4 is flat inferior border. And the shape of the vertebrae is either rectangle, uh, is, is rectangle horizontal in both of them. CS4, in addition to being a rectangle horizontal, you can see that all the inferior, board, the inferior borders of C2, C3, and C4 are concave. I'm not sure that everybody here is familiar with this, but when we evaluate cervical vertebral maturation, we look at two 
variables here. The inferior border of C2, C3, and C4, and also we see the changes of the vertebral uh, uh, shape of C3 and C4. What happens when we are young? We expect to have flat inferior border, and we expect the, the shape of the vertebrae C2 and C3 and the rest of them trapezoidal uh, or rectangle in horizontal direction. Rectangle in horizontal direction. And as we grow, we expect the inferior border to start from C2 to be concave and then C3 and C4. And the shape of the vertebrae start to change from trapezoid to rectangle horizontal to uh, square in shape and finally become rectangle vertical will become uh, more or longer uh, and rectangle horizontal which goes with rectangle vertical which goes with the general growth of the body the other question that we'd like to answer here when to start treatment do we start the treatment in the early mixed dentition or late mixed dentition in general, we agree that we should use functional appliances in growing patients, but we don't want to start it very early because we don't want to, to do a treatment of four or five years because, because by uh, logic, we should finish the treatment after the eruption of permanent teeth to align them. So you don't want the patient to stay in your uh, clinic for five years or four years. So the best treatment strategy is to start treatment, functional appliance treatment, to correct class two in the late mixed dentition or early permanent dentition. So you can do one phase treatment. However, if you want to start treatment early, you should do two phase of treatment, not one phase treatment. So it is controversial. In the literature, you can see people support early treatment or sometimes people uh, support late treatment but in general in general we as orthodontists prefer, prefer to start treatment in the late mixed dentition and not early mixed dentition late mixed dentition or early permanent dentition if you look at the studies here comparing patient treated in the early mixed dentition with those treated in the late mixed dentition we find that both methods were found to be successful to reduce the increased overjet with no difference in the amount of skeletal effect achieved or the quality of the final occlusal alignment. However, when patients had their functional appliance fitted earlier, this is according to uh, Laura Mitchell book, their treatment, so I'm quoting here from Laura Mitchell, their treatment lasted longer and they needed to attend more appointments. This means that early treatment is more expensive and more important. Uh, more importantly, the treatment burden is greater for the patient. So those studies, yes, we can tell no difference, lacking there are other factors that we should consider when we decide when to start, and, and most of the time we prefer to start, as I said, late mixed dentition or early permanent dentition. So when to start early? We can start early if, if there is a reason behind it. Early treatment of class two with functional appliance was found to temporarily improve the self-esteem of patients. So a patient, the patient has psychological problem with his appearance or susceptible to trauma, then maybe we can start early to reduce the overjet. And this should be the main objective of our treatment. So it's generally it's better to start this to summarize what I said generally it's better to start functional appliance therapy in the late mixed dentition stage providing that the patient is still growing with exceptions if malocclusion has a negative impact on patient psychology on the children's psychology if the patient is prone to trauma in these cases early treatment can be done but remember that we have to do it in two phase treatment with retention period in between does functional appliance fit anyone? Is it indicated for any patient? No. We have, as I said, we have to do it in growing patients, skeletal class 2 malocclusion with deficient mandible, but this doesn't mean that we do, we do not use it in class 2 prognatic maxilla. We can use it in class 2 also prognatic maxilla and 
deficient mandible combination and it's preferable to use it in average or reduced lower face height we still can use it in long faces but with certain modification like we should ensure that we don't allow posterior teeth to erupt we should have increased overjet so we'll be able to jump the bite forward so in cases of class 2 division 2 you don't have overjet where you have the upper incisor retrocline in this case if you want to use functional price to correct mandibular deficiency maybe we should correct the case into class 2 division 1 by flaring lower his upper incisor forward and then you can insert functional plants or use it there has to be no or mild lower crowding and also lower incisor should be average or retroclined in position why because we expect to flare lower incisor when we do functional plants also as i said functional plants can be used in class 3 malocclusion and the only appliance that we have is Frankel 3 appliance which is again it's different it has no lingual flanges no lingual pads sorry and instead of having the lingual the labial pads in the lower they are inserted in the upper so to allow or stimulate maxillary uh, uh, alveolar growth anteriorly to correct the class 2 so it's indicated for mild class through class 3 and also can be used for retention after orthopedic treatment of class 3 cases with face mask therapy for example which is the reverse face mask how to manage functional plans in the clinic first of all we should agree that the patient is indicated for functional plans therapy all the indication are present in the patients and then we can of course discuss the case with the patients explain to the patient the importance of uh, maintaining oral hygiene and maintaining high cooperation during the treatment and then we can take impression upper and lower and we take bite registration this is the most important part that to, to take bite registration in edge to edge occlusion why because we want to build our appliance into this position and after that we mount the cases the, the cast upper or lower on articulator in the edge to edge occlusion sometimes people make it in the ideal bite sometimes bring it to edge to edge and we have can we sometimes we can do it in two stages depends on the case and depends on the school so after that you manufacture the appliance and finally when it's ready you deliver the appliance if it's removable it has to be worn 12 to 18 months if it's fixed it has to be less than a year and as i said the removal ones should be worn only 16 hours a day or 12 to 16 but the fixed one are obvious it's uh, 24 hours that's why we have to wear it a shorter period of time to avoid flaring of lower incisors and after we finish we can evaluate the case and then we start our fixed orthodontic appliance and finally finish the treatment and put the patient in retention so here just to show you how the case is prepared and mounted on on articulator and then you place the patient in edge to edge occlusion this is the bite you registered of course when we take the bite we have to use hard wax and thick wax in order to maintain that bite and this example of uh, the pen and tube herbs appliance splinted type herbs appliance so this example for one of the cases that was treated by herbs appliance this is the patient before and of course we took impression and then we inserted the appliance after inserting the appliance we did expansion here see after five months you can see the patient achieved class one from class two into class one or class two-ish sorry class three-ish malocclusion and then we inserted fixed appliance we did all the uh, finishing details and this is the patients after treatment so conclusion of the lecture functional appliance has a room in the orthodontic practice and it's effective or beneficial to treat class 2 if done 
properly at the right time and using the right appliance and with high cooperation from the patients it works by combination of dental and skeletal effects still controversy exists in the literature about whether it can really grow mandible or not even we expect or the conclusion is that we can still we can grow mandible but the amount of growth is not clinically significant it does grow the mandible but not that much and these are the two references that i use where i got some of the pictures and some of the information from these two books by prophet and laura mitchell thank you very much for listening